It's your design of Twangwa Power. Guns us a power one more time. The street disciple. Katuli Fanya. Eh, tunezo tukai Fanya tena. This time round, kona guest mungine mu amazing to Kabisa. But before we get to see her, acha kwanza ni introduce my partner in crime, Sunipo Tano. It's your design. And I to Philip, the tallest and the most bearded. That's a power kwa isi at Twangwa Power. Tunepika kwenye a uh, convo and scripted and about us it to kutambariza venye na faus yo bazengare ndio hiyo so and uh, today as we keep telling you the next episode is always better and to me personally this one is brilliant because this one is more it's showbiz both the show and the business side and i don't think there's anybody who understands and embodies the whole showbiz like not even lifestyle just the whole showbiz process lifestyle and everything else then miss Odon Indonga you know her from blankets and wine Nain Yahoo uh, perform yes <laughs> and uh, she's doing so many things to help both women in the industry just the industry as a whole and she has been at it for a minute so we are here to give her flowers she deserves them all of them and uh, she's really 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 amazing uh, when she said yes to this, I'm like, I, I guess we are doing something good then. <laughs> if Madoni, I'm, I'm excuse her here, yeah, because I'm like, yeah. so Miss uh, Madoni Donga, welcome to Convo Unscripted. Thank you. Love your your style. <laughs> oh, style, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. The yes. bold son. Hey, let's match test manzi. Kutesa is a must. Kutesa is a must. Hey, it's a must. You exactly. must look the part. <laughs> let's start with your eccentric fashion. Yeah, it's eccentric. How how would you describe? I just say fashion forward. Fashion forward. Fashion forward. Yeah, you've been like this for, for a minute. Yeah. Like, people who know you know this, yeah. is, this is you. Yeah. Is it something, it's something in you or yeah. did you have to decide this is what I'm doing or it has always been like that since you're a kid? Yeah. I think I've always liked um, expressing myself and clothes is a fun way to express myself. So Nikki Angalia, like photos from when I was a kid, um, I, I see it. <laughs> I've been on it. I, I remember like having fights with my parents about you know, kuna, una nulua kia tuya Christmas. Yeah. Then una kwa ikona kama uwa. Then they're yeah. like, ii mawa itatoka. And I'm like, for when I have it, mm -hmm. nitafraya. Yeah. So yeah, I've had it always. Oh, nice. Yeah. And also it's it's the same style, literally even in your music, yeah. uh, before you even get to, to, to everything else. Because even in your music, it's the first time like people had it, did not know what, what to expect. But then we kind of literally got used to it yeah. because it's good music. It's, yeah. it's also very forward. Yeah. So maybe it was before its time so you have to get people to yeah. to understand it and take it up but it's always it's from the look to the music it's always something that the society always embraces it immediately yeah. so how have you always dealt with that like from yeah. the music to the sound so the i think the most important thing has been me accepting me mm -hmm. um so then because i'm comfortable with it um i don't find it I don't know, like strange or like giving a statement. You know what I mean? It's yeah. just like, it's just how you are. Yes. And then I think that's helped me to have conversations with people about the limitations they place on themselves. So I remember for many years, I spotted a, a style that uh, a lot of Samburu and Turkana women have, right? When they shave the mm -hmm. sides of the head. And it's not just them. There's lots of African communities where women have that style and people will be like only you can rock that style and i'm like no anybody can rock this style you know like ni woman jk your yeah. prison that mm. says mimi mm. siezi yes so because umesema wezi awezi mm -hmm. so, so it does not bother you critics or whatever it's written somewhere um or you got, have got i think i got used to the curiosity what mm. i did is to not try and take it personally like yeah. a yeah. emlon yongea because a I mean, topic of I discussion mean, yeah. i see why you want to talk Keep about talking. me <laughs> amazing yeah. sound yeah. you could share back to what you've just indicated mm. like neither limitations and to make care on us maga human beings yani ni creatures wengine were amazing but the problem is that tuna jeki anga vikwazo si wenye and do you think your design are limiting ourselves as human beings not everyone but a section of as we do limit ourselves imetuzuia ku scale up when it comes to the various aspects of life yeah i really think so 
when I was younger, I used to read this quote um, all the time that uh, we are we're not af- we're not afraid that we are powerless. We are afraid that of how powerful we are. Yeah. And I didn't used to really believe that because there was a time that I really did think that there are limits that there's somebody who can deny you an opportunity na kifunga imefungwa you know um but i think the more i have awakened you know the more i've come into a realization of like oh yo yo wait we are an extension of that whatever we consider to be god energy yeah. we are an extension of that we are the creator we are the energy i share in the energy that creates universes mm-hmm. and that is all knowing all powerful or present the more i have uh, surrendered into that and that becomes my position mm-hmm. now i'm I, i'm starting to experience the other side which is actually the fear is that you are infinitely powerful mm-hmm. yeah. so your will be done as you say it becomes as you imagine it becomes and seeing the turn around time between i had this thought and now here is a manifestation of that yes. thought becoming shorter and shorter and shorter so i really agree with you it's like in the city na kwanga tumije kajela because there's also now a fear like when if it can be anything yeah so then what will it be yeah usha saizi philosophy yeah muhimu sana you're not on his realm he will love you yeah yeah in the home so another question is saizi kuna milango zenye ushabisha ni previously try ukagwaya ukaingiza nje hivyo kuna mi ni nani hani akina nani wanaweza kani accept na mtu kama hizo but right now una walk in boldly in fact una kuandalia meza una kupatia kichwa na kuambia welcome back again yeah which I've doors had are those? that I've had man so i live in multiple layers right so um music what chance me can find music mm-hmm. there are places that i didn't know you can imagine to enter yani ata siko na drua and then pale nili drua was like oh ata so mimi na nominate mse mwingine you know and then they're like what are you talking about it's you just i had that in june there's like the world's greatest cello player um was coming to nairobi they had hit me up in 2019 before the pandemic mm-hmm. so me in my head I was like oh maybe in gig ya job tunaweza sikumia wase wa good times or produce events yeah. so even as i'm having the meeting with them for like so we would like you to be in the show i'm like oh okay here are some other artists who i think <laughs> and they're like that's okay thanks but as we're saying you yeah. you know and i yeah drew i really had one of those realizations for like of course it's you and your your mother yeah. there's nobody else yeah. who ought to be in this position not because i'm better than anybody else but like peer frequency yeah. you know we have learned the message to talk but selen ilifanya research yangu ku draw who is your your man ilikuwa ni made discount i was like ah Satoshi Mboga na Jaminia but apa Satoshi Mboga so to be so powerfully reminded that it's you actually setting to mwingine it's you and it must be you and the rooms that you're entering those are your rooms there's some donor conversations I'm having now that have made me realize that um my highest imagination is too limited mm-hmm. like based on them the money they have to disburse versus you your project how you're thinking mm-hmm. about it it's like oh bro more zeros mm. more ongeza <laughs> ongeza <laughs> like go back to the drawing board jipeleke ka weekend ufikire hiyo mambo you've you've not dreamt an audacious yeah. you know dream enough mm. and i feel like recently i was watching farrell williams he just put out his first collection as the creative director for men for louis vuitton and there was something about watching that i cried i cried a lot because i'm like um say like now ukiangalia kwa music for many years wase wako na rank farel but farel in your culture you know like yeah. okay now when you look you know because you're like oh but he's an alternative artist like yeah but he's also the one producing for you know your jay z's your yeah. snoops it's him farel has been so dope for so long and for him to just hold that big vision that yes it's music but i also love fashion and i have something to contribute to the visuals 
and then out there he is like just like running Louis Vuitton and mm. like it was the flyest freshest show the all the black celebrities in this world or the mm. basketball players everyone was at that show like yeah. Jay-Z and Beyonce were at this show mm. you know there was something about that moment where again I was reminded man mm, it's too small imagination yako ni ndogo this thing can be anything you want it mm. to be mm. so dream an audacious dream your design na pia mjana nilisoma mali dante a philosopher yeah Kabonga kasema we shouldn't be scared we shouldn't be afraid of fate um, when it comes to our fate no one can take it away yeah because it's a gift yes. and there is no one else who can gift it to us yeah I really so think- to fight with in whatever it is even if ni podcast una get ile design na eh but una say una shindwa hata magesto kinyo tumekuwa nao filo ako zile uko shuo umemgea na mtu kama hizo <laughs> eh inafanyika unapata una realize ni si ujeki ya vikwazo yeah. si uji limit yani but when you internalize everything when you drama queen anasema as in the world is ours to conquer yes. yeah. right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i tell and speaking of dreaming and everything else you the two platforms you're on be it, you're, you're all in show business but being uh, blankets and wine and even your music you go to a point where you don't need to beg for people to play your music yeah but so that's an interesting thing as an artist mm-hmm. that thing never ends mm-hmm. oh, okay uh-huh. so and it's good maybe maybe banner boys has now ended <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when you have the whole machine of the whole world yes, you know totally. working for you that thing never ends and i don't think that thing will ever end mm-hmm. um because art is not objective elect tunapenda sio elect tunapenda art is not objective and the higher you go the higher the stakes actually mm-hmm. right so saya to easy forgive jizekt but your verse mbaya you know what i mean i mean if you level like god state yes. yes come as your god like... flow usi toke kwa studio yes. so unless he has a lot of internal like self belief mm-hmm. and kuna hiyo doubt yes na hiyo doubt inakuanga part and parcel ya sana in, in my head ni bafikiria iko of course you are still human but uko ile point ya listen i shagging <laughs> another thing let me tell you art i feel like that's a thing that is true in art in sports so i don't know i'm really a big lebron uh, james fan mm. Uh, you can have an amazing season mm-hmm. you can have an amazing game yesterday yeah. doesn't mean you're going to have an amazing game today yes. so every day you start basically at scratch <laughs> level 200 every day you start at scratch and it's a little bit like that with uh, music you can have a song that does amazing and then the next song is so amazing you mm-hmm. love it but for whatever reasons yes. the yeah, fans don't feel it yeah yeah um Another thing I'm always thinking about is every day somebody is discovering you. Today there's somebody who is listening to Michael Jackson for the first time in their life. Yes. There's somebody who is going to discover Bien tomorrow for the first time. So the, you're always a new artist to somebody and there's a humility at least for me that that brings mm-hmm. like outa waifika. Outa waifika. Sana ni yo kitu. Outa waifika like you're like oh same in your goat it's like yes. bro at kudriwe nani atukutambui. Yeah. The other thing that stuff is very relative. Mm-hmm. Unaweza kukitesa kwa markets fulani. Mm-hmm. Uingie market nyingine wase wako like mhm. Yeah. Hii tu. That way. So there's uh, I I like that like <laughs> in a cookie pata it keeps you humble like bro like <laughs> what happens if you let it get into your head I think well sidai kuna your experience for once it afika eh nimeona wasani tukitaja jina ba atutaji yeah yes and I think in a kwaga sumu your staff king yakwa I think there's a certain level of confidence unafa kwa unlock kama msani in the belief in your own talent and the belief in your own perspective you have something unique and special to share yes. and to be able to stand by your work right that you feel good that whether you understand my language whether you understand my music 
this is my work and I stand by my work. Mm -hmm. I think that's really important. Yes. Yeah. Oh, sorry. And I think that's the only thing it should ever be. Yes. Now when it crosses over, which is like I'm untouched, I'm unmatched, like yes. nobody can ever get to my level, mm -hmm. I think you start to build a prison, yeah. right? Of your own expectations mm -hmm. about yourself, yes. right? Yes. And I think that that's the way an artist can start to die mm -hmm. internally. But I'll... <laughs> For, for, for you, I look at you like in a different way. Like there's this, there's music. Yeah. Then now we go to the business side of it yeah. where you're very bold in both. Yeah. But my check, when it comes to BMW, <laughs> you've decided I'm dying with this baby. <laughs> if there's anybody who's been knocked down yeah. and everybody knew, yeah. Yeah. it's a wrap. Yeah. We are done. Yeah. But then you're like, okay, I'll take a hiatus. <laughs> but Niki Rudy, <laughs> because I mean, since it's what, 15 years now? Yeah, this is our 15th year. It's November 15 years, and congratulations on, was it two weeks ago? Yeah, it, it yeah, did really, really, really well. Ago, right? yeah, yeah. Past, yeah. It did really well, and yeah. you have another one still Last coming up. October. Exactly, yeah. so it's every quarter. It's every quarter now. Uh, there's yeah. one. So how now, when it comes now to, Nini, it's now not music, it's not you in a booth. Mm. It's now there's this platform that people love, mm. that very many people want, that you've literally made it get to this level. Everybody is trying to come there from billionaires to anybody else. How have you, can you say you've managed to sustain that like you're a Jewia. I am so I'll take a year or two off. Yeah. But I'll be back. I'm yeah. not dying out. Yeah. What's that yeah. mentor? Yeah. What's that business aspect yeah. of it? So first I want to say I'm very grateful for exposure. I have been at places uh, thanks to my music world yeah. touring. Mm -hmm. I've been to festivals that have been running 60 years, mm -hmm. 54 years, 48 years. Yeah. So just seeing that gave me perspective, like something can be really, it can have a really long life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then s the second thing I think for me is understanding that we are constantly improving. So us guys, are ne uh, we are never like, I'd say to my fika, like, mm -hmm. Uh, cheers, cheers, cheers. But like we are constantly improving. At mm -hmm. there are levels, bro, to be unlocked to this thing. Yes. There's levels. Mm -hmm. And, you know, blankets and wine is only one of the things that we do at yes. Good Times Africa. So mm -hmm. the company is called Good Times Africa. Yes. That's a production company. We produce mm -hmm. concerts and festivals. Mm -hmm. That's our speciality. Mm -hmm. So blankets is only one solution for one consumer in one college oh, region, yes. right? Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, we are so many years behind on our own plan about oh, being wow. able to export this to other places, mm -hmm. you know, in the East African diaspora, yes. in the African diaspora, really, yes. right? Um, perhaps we were ahead of our uh, time oh, yes. because, you know, now we have this growth and growth and growth of, you know, African music, yes. right? When Banaboy sells out a stadium mm -hmm. in America, yeah. in um, yeah. Amsterdam, oh, you see what I'm saying? So there's something also about where the audience also needed to be before these platforms can interface yes. um, with audiences. So whereas two weeks ago was really dope and we're like, yo, dope, dope, dope. It's like, we're already like, ile kazi kombele yetu tunamkanga like, bro. Like, Kigali comes back, you yes. know, this summer, they run this summer, Kigali mm -hmm. comes back. We've been trying for years to get into, you know, uh, Tanzania. Mm -hmm. We have this opportunity to export it. So there's a question really about like, the vision of the business is so much bigger than the triumph on that mm -hmm. one okay. specific day. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes, yes. That one specific day tells us we are heading in the right direction yes. but we are heading yes. <laughs> I'm on the move. So i think that is part of the reason why it's just like that's a thing so um the other thing is also when you look at the history of long companies that have been here a long time mm -hmm. man there's nothing like this at growth is just like this and zing. Yeah. it's so zoom, 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 zoom. so i think being able to read that has given me a lot of peace over the years like it's intense now, you know, when you're taking your hiatus and feeling like you're lost, mm -hmm. it feels so overwhelming in that moment. But if you just pull back a little <clears throat> bit, you know, yeah. it's just widen the lens. If you just keep widening the lens, if you say that you're building an 100 year business mm -hmm. and you're like, you're in trimester one, yeah. you know, you're still, you're still an infant. Yeah. 
So then that gives me peace. It's like, okay, got you. Even this whole vision. Yes. There's a part of this vision that I won't even live to see it yeah. being fulfilled, mm, you yes. know? Um, and for that, I, I really, ref- in my head, I often reference like Moses. Mm. That was an, you know, there's this character in the Bible called Moses, in case you don't know. Yeah. And also the viewers, I shouldn't make assumptions, you know, yeah. it's a story. It's a, a story yeah. about this guy yes. called Moses who had to liberate his people. That was a huge vision. Moses didn't see the end of yeah. the him. vision. Yeah. Him, he played, he, his job was to hold the vision. Yes. And then he played like part A. Yes. Get them out of there to this place. He didn't even get them to the place. He got them out of there. So I think those are the things that kind of make me be like, oh, okay. Mdogo mdogo, ikituni, like, ini long game, ini marathon, mrefu sana. It's more about endurance. It's endurance. Right. The race is given, not to the not swift. To the yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. So 15 years, we must say, ma. But then again, kuna zile formative years. Right now, unazuka kachini, no, no, you ain't a success. We've just mentioned yeah. like a fortnight ago. Yeah. It was amazing. But it's a miyaka za kwanza. Yeah. Kuna ill experience uli come across ukasema, well, maybe ni me bite more than I can chew. I don't 100%. think iki to uh, it'll take off. 100%. What are some of those things that it's like, what are some of those things that it's what did I get myself into? 100%. I remember actually the first time <clears throat> we sold out our tickets, which was like 300 tickets. Mm-hmm. Because tulikuwa tuna, the first gig had like 120, then 108. Tulikuwa tuna tezetu wapo, then mm-hmm. like 210, even in a like grow. Mm-hmm. When we sold out 300 tickets, they came to me from the door and they said, oh, we've sold all the tickets. Mm-hmm. So now what do we do? <laughs> Guys are still queuing. Yeah. yeah, and now we don't have tickets to yeah. sell. Mm-hmm. I had an instant headache. I had like, I didn't know what to you do. You don't even think that about your going you to don't, Yeah, you don't think, I mean. You hope for it. Yeah, at that time hope was a strategy, yes. you know. Yes. I didn't know that hope was not a strategy yeah. at that point. And then also at that point people started saying, oh, you know now this thing needs to be a brand. And in my head I'm like, no, but a brand is like Safaricom. Yeah. Or like Kimbo, you know, like a brand. Yes. So I I didn't know what to do with that information Mm -hmm. and it felt overwhelming. And I didn't really have precedent. I didn't really have somebody who had been here and says, oh, I've seen this thing. This is kind of what to anticipate. You're now entering this stage called growth. This is what happens. These are the challenges at growth. I didn't go to business school, you know. So I didn't know what to expect literally. And yeah, there were very many moments kind of in those early years where it was just like, what am I doing? Also, every gig was suspense until we started doing online ticketing maybe in 2012, Mm -hmm. 13. Every gig was suspense. Will people come? Yes. Tutajua, tukifika siku ya show. Na uma shali pia kila kitu. Sindio? Samu nangoja kama wase wanaingia ama waingi. So unajua tu mabesi zako like, okay, awa mabesi kama watano. Awa ni kushua. Awa ni kushua. Na wanaguja ni wabaye a drink by the way. After that, your guess is as good as mine. So it was very stressful. The, the, those formative years, mm-hmm. I, I really had a lot of stress. I picked a hyperacidity from those years because it just feels like high stakes high 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 stakes mm-hmm. then now okay now the, the gig is happening okay you're managing the gig okay you're also performing in this gig okay so like i used to be sick every month mm-hmm. blankets kisha ivi one week we got two flat mm-hmm. line yeah. death mm-hmm. then now you have two weeks to arrange the next one oh mm-hmm. my god yeah losses Yes, not so much. Mm. Eh, but sister said to me, she could grow, grow, and she could feel like, okay, eh, she said, kona say, eh, mm. make moves in Guinea, and she put a wow. Ukuni wapi? Una and apology to our suppliers, yes. and like, bro, saving your command, and nini. Yeah. The cool thing is, we maintain relationships with suppliers. Now, pia kwa imaisha, kau kona deni yamse manzi. Let's make him humble. Yes. No, we don't do so much. Kanga simu yake, okay, like. Yes, sir. But you see why you watch them to na odo akutafute. When you na fakwa very yes. proactive. Adam, yeah, you call me on Monday. Like hey, hey, yeah, yeah. Actually, on the Thursday, you call me on Monday. This is where I'm predicting the situation. This is how I'm seeing. And because we work with the same suppliers over and over and over, people also owe you not owe you, give you a lot of grace. Mm-hmm. And you will see, like, 
as your podcast grows, if you're with this crew, they will see your effort and mm. your energy and like how you're moving and they will offer you grace. I found that a lot of people want you to win. Yes, there's lots of haters and yes. da, 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 da. But there's also a lot of people who just see mm. why something is good, na bidi yako, na energy yako, and people want you to win. Si tumoe kuwa na gig manze, tuko outside, like, mm. actually I can't remember to me lose pesa ngapi, mm. like, put an insert number here. Yeah. Do, imepotea. Mm. Mm. Mnakati na suppliers, na mna explain here, walifanya gigenu like four months before they saw how it went. Yes. They were like, yo, can we offer you? They offered us their things for free. Can mm. we do a gig that maybe we can take the tickets? I found that to be so gracious of them, which told me that East after Nafanya Sufala. Yes. Wasepia wanaona, mm-hmm. na wanaona value, mm-hmm. and the kuna loyalty. Mm-hmm. So, Pia, it matters who you bring into your fold, it matters how you manage those relationships. Yes. So, Sae, ah, Nlisha, Zoya Kumbe, Biashara is na kwanga I also did this like uh, mentorship mm-hmm. thing. Yeah with some really incredible business leaders who are like, ah, sasa we kulipa tu, omwe pigiwa na landlord ya 200 employees. Mm-hmm. Have you been auctioned? Have you yeah. had to move back to your mother's SQ with your family? So just like listening to really big business leaders, mm-hmm. yeah. walo wa mekapitia. Yeah. I was like, oh, okay, so loss is part of business. S- success, within success is loss. Mm-hmm. And losing money is part of making money. Um, money, yeah. What I can just say is like now you become comfortable with like, oh, okay, you make better decisions mm. and where you don't do as anticipated, you manage those conversations mm. and you be faithful with the plan that you give. So, see, I'm going to say, and then and I kona to kikula soft life. And then, sorry, I mean, in that business, me share you. So, me angry in my back in a modoni, I'm back in a modoni. Side classes, side coins. See your designs. Uh, thanks, sir. Thank you. Uh, it's a pleasure to meet you. A pleasure, Mose. Shall we go? Come on, put your show. Lazima. Yes. So, uh, Igunza had to, to step out, but the show continues, like Bodoni will tell you. So, Isho Yako, you're now starting out, it's now getting traction and everything yeah. else. Then somebody comes to you with a proposition. Yeah. Uh, Is it a proposition? I don't What's want to talk about No, that. we're not going there. Okay. We are not measuring names. Okay. But it's the learnings on it because yeah. it's it's like what's the name of that movie for um, I forget like somebody gives you an offer you cannot refuse yeah. but then you decide yeah. no yeah. first of all yeah. at that point yeah. to be very honest if it was me I <laughs> take the money and run well you I think it, I wasn't, it wasn't preposition in a way that would have been like oh let's talk about this uh-huh. you know it didn't feel like a conversation uh-huh. and so. I didn't think that that's a thing that we could really uh, take forward. Mm-hmm. The, the way the thing was framed yes. wasn't kind of like, yo, let's build. Mm-hmm. Um, and then now I would say like, you know, if you if you widen the lens, which yes. is really my go-to thought all the time. See the forest for the trees. Yeah, just, just widen the lens a mm-hmm. bit. I think that there's so much space mm-hmm. in this industry of ours to make a difference. It happens, of course, you're not feeling it, you're not, yeah. you're not part of it. But then now, what happens later now is like your biggest test, I think, yeah. ever. Because it's yeah. now, it's not necessarily general competition. Yeah. It's somebody just out with a yeah. crosshair. So I think for me, that, that, that window, how did I survive that window? Yes. First, there was the, really the reminder of the length of the vision. Mm-hmm. Like, years so now. me, mine is 100 years. Mm-hmm. My desire is that it will, be, it will morph into what it is, but me, me have been gifted the part where it's the 100 years. Yes. The other part is um, the desire for the regional reach, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So uh, being able to pay more attention to Kampala at that time was helpful. Being able to imagine uh-huh. what other spaces in East Africa mm-hmm. we could probably enter, you yes. know, was helpful. Yes. Um, the other piece around that time is then I had started working with these Swiss producers. Yes. And so our project was now taking off mm-hmm. uh, sort of in, in Switzerland, mm-hmm. in France, and really in the wider Europe. So. Um, it didn't feel. So it helped it didn't you concentrate. Feel, yeah, other it issues. didn't feel good, yes. but it didn't feel like 
zero sum. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, it didn't mm. feel like it didn't feel like zero sum. Yeah. It just kind of felt like okay. So in this moment and also we were exhausted of running mm-hmm. uh, a festival. We were doing first Sunday of every month, yes. you know. So we were really burnt out. Mm-hmm. I remember when we came into January of 2014. Mm-hmm. Uh, we did the two day and everybody was so excited and so thrilled and we were so tired. Yeah. We didn't make any money off that gig. Oh, I was wow. completely, you know, was mm. so burnt out. So uh, around 2015, we really needed a... Yeah, a break. We really needed a break. We ah. really needed a breather. Mm-hmm. So being in the breather also allowed us to imagine something else. We developed another festival called mm. Africa Nouveau. We yeah. were able to test that. So 2016, yes. when we came back Mm -hmm. there was so much love and it was just like a reminder the ones who are for you are for you right Mm -hmm. um and then there's also something about you know company compare or safi which means Mm -hmm. that it forces you to refine your offering Ah, so now you're not refining your offering so that you can compete against Mm -hmm. right i really don't believe in against your refining your thing yeah. so that the people who derive value from your thing are so deeply satisfied with the thing that you are doing mm-hmm. and they bring more of the same yes right so you build your own community you build your own audience mm-hmm. and that has really been you know my perspective and um i would say that kind of testy mm-hmm. feeling that it had left in my mouth yes. in around 2014-15 mm-hmm. by the time we were coming back in 2016 it had completely dissipated i was oh, just like look there's a lot of space yes. everybody should do what they can and actually if you are committed to solving even just one problem yes. in this music industry Perfect. you are an ally yes you're not my competitor mm-hmm. you're an yeah. ally and yeah that's how i feel Oh, nice. And so before uh, you talked about at that point when you sold out 300 tickets and everybody's telling you to turn into a business and you're like, what? Mm. A business is a safari gong. It's the Kimbo's yeah. of this world and everything yeah. else. So now what, how did you now turn that into yeah. what it is now? Yeah. Did it involve, did, did, did you like do marketing school or business school or was it now just calling mentors and everything yeah. else? Like what was the process? Yeah. There was some talking to some mentors. Mm-hmm. Um, the other piece was kind of doing a lot of reading Mm -hmm. and sort of research and it's like, okay, so now this thing called brand, what does it mean? Mm -hmm. What does it look like? How does it operate? There was a lot of trial and error, Mm -hmm. you know, lots of like trying to figure things out in real time. Um, I think for me, the, the, the fact that we've had a big vision from the beginning, I've yeah. always had a due north, at least as far as the festivals are concerned, there's yeah. always a due north. Mm-hmm. And I also have, it feels to me like such an enormous responsibility. Um, first to the artists who accept to be on the platform, then to all the facilitators of the platform, the sound engineers, the security guys, mm-hmm. and everybody who's working behind the scenes to make this thing happen. There's such a responsibility for us mm-hmm. to fulfill whatever we say it is, yes. that it actually is that yes. experience mm-hmm. for them. Then, of course, there's, you know, the vendors and the sponsors mm-hmm. and, you know, critically the audience. Yes. So when you're kind of just thinking about those things, man, you don't even have time to be like, Kunenda yeah. kwanini. Like, I, sikwagi na your time. We've yeah. not had that time for years. You're mm-hmm. just kind of like, just keep moving. Yes. Yeah, you just yes. have to keep walking towards, mm-hmm. you know, keep walking towards the light, you yes. know, just keep walking. Um, and then in around 2015 or 16 or so, I got a new business partner mm-hmm. um, who comes from, you know, venture capital and just like seeing the way he structures oh, his nice. world. Okay. I, I got new terminology, I got mm-hmm. new language, the way he thinks about things. It was very helpful for me to like, see mm. another way yeah and yeah that's just the way it's been and, and in this hundred year project is there something you looked at is there a festival or a business maybe one that you narrowed you're like it's this one this is this is due north yes yeah. but this is my due north this is the <laughs> yeah. one company yeah i obsess over. i really haven't i really haven't uh, i think it's a mishmash you know mm-hmm. i uh, for example very much admire um a things, it, music festivals that mm-hmm. have been here yes. 
for a long, long time, like I said, yes. being a, a traveling mm. artist, I've yes. got to, I've gotten to see festivals yes. that are like, oh, you guys are sixty. I remember playing at a festival that was sixty-three years old, and I was like, sixty-three years that old, still looks like, fresh. Yes. yeah, and it's still so culturally mm -hmm. relevant, yes. and um, so that's a reminder, like, oh, this thing is long. Yes, this vision is long, mm. and the people who found founded it, you know, are still involved in the festival, yes. and they're just wukas over there. Yeah. <laughs> So I was also like, oh, so you can also just be a music industry professional for like all your life. You yes. don't have to retire, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Um, so I think that's been very helpful looking at the things mm -hmm. in our music business. And then I think for me, the other one has been to look at like actors. I really find mm -hmm. actors interesting. So someone like Denzel Washington mm -hmm. is perhaps now more valuable yes. than he was, you know, training day or yes. whatever think yeah. about something that he's been really profound in yes. you know in in his past yeah. so those are people that i i really look at actors careers and i have a lot of admiration because you can act right to the end of your like yes. there will always be a scene that needs an 80 year old man true so you don't need to retire right there's you'll watch a thing and then there's a role for a great grandmother yes. that great grandmother in that role is an actor mm -hmm. you you don't even know their name because maybe yes. you're focused on the starring but mm -hmm. that great grandmother yeah. has probably been in this game for in such number of years yes. here so when i look at actors i'm reminded like yeah this thing doesn't have to there's no sell it's by a, date it's such a brilliant that you say that because i not thought of it because people like samuel jackson viola davis yeah. all these people they look like they're more relevant now even to yeah. the younger audience who's yeah. what 60 years yeah. younger than them yeah who are now like discovering them and these people now feel like they are fresher now exactly. than every time because sometimes you look at the reaction they get viola davis is now probably uh doing more movies yeah. probably than she has before. more access than she's ever had exactly. in her career so it's it's not a one yeah. day or five year thing because she's been here for that kind of taraji p hands on yeah. This is when they are like, this is like their glory days, yes. yet you'd expect. Yes. I thought you hit like in 99 yeah. when Baby Boy was there, yeah. but you look at them now, so it's it's quite amazing. And I want to go back to somebody called Sean Paul. I read Sean somewhere. Paul. Shanda Paul. Shanda Paul. <laughs> so it's, it's that concert, uh, I've read somewhere that it's that concert that kind of opened your eyes. Oh into. my God. Sean Paul, if you ever watch this thing. <laughs> ah, I don't know. I can't, I don't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sean Paul was the first time I first, you know, went out to yes. like a concert and, and like, hey, 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 hey. Concert. Yeah. <laughs> so Sean Paul was my first concert. Mm -hmm. But the other piece in Sean Paul was what we saw in the music video mm -hmm. is what Sean Paul brought on stage. Uh -huh. So that yeah. level of choreography, of energy, and, you know, there were no skips. He was fully in charge of his mm -hmm. body and of his performance yes. where he was not breathless mm -hmm. i don't know it felt like we were in a everlasting music video exactly. right <laughs> there was something so admirable mm -hmm. about that the mm -hmm. spectacle of the yes. show mm -hmm. um but also the perfection yes of the show mm -hmm. right and it really just made me think like as an entertainer that's 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 a thing. That's the way I would like it to be. Wow. That, was that you like present. Your light bulb moment. Like I, I think it was one of the light bulb yes. moments, but it definitely was a moment that made me feel like, oh, that's mm -hmm. so. That's entertainment. Yes. Right. That yes. felt like entertainment. This is it. The, yes. the whole thing. Yeah, just the whole thing. Well, I remember I was in that show. Hey, you true. remember that show? Quite town. We remember that show, and that's the show he lost his phone and. This was what, 2004, and I remember I think Nation even wrote a story about how Sean Paul lost his phone, and it was national news. Right now, if you lost your phone, guys are like, yeah. But now, everybody's coming to say, Sean Paul lost his phone in Kenya. I think it was page three of the day. Yeah, because Nation. also, we're like, imagine if you have his phone, who can you I, call? Exactly, you're like, oh, are you yeah, going to call now, Beyonce? Gonna Beyonce. So, everybody was bringing up people they thought, <laughs> that will be on the phone. Exactly. And <laughs> So I, I think even artists were like, eh, sini pate tu yo simu. Una pigia tu nini shagi ni aje, ni kona show up, uh -huh. ABCD. So I remember those shows like in a shagi and everything else. And so at that point, you were you, you already knew what you wanted to do? No, I would say I knew that I love music, mm -hmm. but I hadn't, at the point at, 
I was watching Sean Paul. I had not made any commitment yes. to music as a you know, career. Yeah, it was doing, like four watching. Gs. Yeah, I was like an intern at uh, at at Africa Youth Parliament. Yeah. And, like shout out, I love that job so much. <laughs> mm-hmm. So that was even before I had entered USIU. So yes. I didn't really have. Um, I hadn't I hadn't chosen music as a yes. career then. Mm-hmm. I just love music a lot. Yes. Um and so the impression I got from that concert was mm-hmm. just like oh wow mm-hmm. entertainment can be so incredible. Yes. Um it was years it was a little while later so it was like a year later mm-hmm. when my friend Jerry and I started singing and then we made our first show. That's the moment I was like okay now I want to do it. music yeah. Wow. I was like in 2005 is when I was like yeah. At this point your mother was really against you. Against music, yes. against the career. My mother has never been against me. It's the career. Yeah, I guess at that point, as a as a young person, you you don't you don't you don't know the difference. Later, you know the difference yeah. because you know you just understand how much your parents love you, and how much has been invested in you, mm-hmm. for you, not for them. You know, yes. like for you, like mm-hmm. for you to have the opportunity to make something of it all yeah. and i can understand why mm. my parent at that moment was like this thing is too precarious yes like in kikui we say oh, Tokyo, you know yeah, like but. so <laughs> like she has no framework to understand that this can be a career yes. and we see it now you mm. know with you know like now parents whose kids are like i mean working hard is fine but me i'm just trying to be tiger woods yes and as a parent you're like yes i know what you're saying it's mm-hmm. true yes. these footballers or these basketball players or even tiger woods indeed but what are the odds that you exactly. are as exceptional and will be in the right place at the right time will have access to those opportunities yeah. you know it's such a one in a million dream mm-hmm. to have like for yeah. real philip if your kid told you they want to be like i don't know could be bright like you know you yes. know that it but can be something chances. that's it you will be and i remember uh, at, at this point is also when i was starting out my my journalism career yeah. i was 20 years old i was at 19 and we wanted to do entertainment so when you go into into the business into the industry they've never had this before so before that they used to write about say akina pepe kale mm-hmm. all these mm-hmm. old guys that our parents yeah. grew up listening so the newsroom was also very old. Oh. So I remember when going into it and Amdusi would look at you and like, you want to write about entertainment. Mm. Like they would look at you because to like, be very honest, there, there was no, <laughs> exact, there was no entertainment to yeah. talk about, indeed, to be very indeed, honest. Indeed, it was indeed. just starting out. Uh, Kina yeah. Five Alive had tried something, yeah. did not really go far. They did well, but did not necessarily break the, the, the ceiling. So at that point when you come and say, I want to start writing about Nini. So they look at you, they're like, what is a nameless? You know, like, mm-hmm. they're like, you want to who? Yeah. So you want to come and call this person nameless. I remember you write it on the copy and then the, the boss comes and says, does this is person, name? what's his name? <laughs> You're like, his name is nameless. So he does have a name, Nico. No. Yes, nameless. Like, that's not a name. <laughs> so you go there and say, Mr. Mavenga has released a new song. <laughs> so at this point, they're looking at you and they're like, you went to school for this? Yeah. So it was a general disdain yeah. because at that point, if you said you're a DJ, a musician, or you can honor Mutua Pombe, Bangi, na Kila Kitu, you're almost like an outcast. Yeah. So when you guys now, the industry now started and exploded, and then me as a writer just became as, just as important as you as a singer. Mm. And then at home, the boss is actually being told by the daughter, hey, say hi to Philip. And then the boss comes and asks me, how do you know my daughter? Do you know she's 16? I'm like, <laughs> Not to know your daughter, like, how do you know my daughter? And I'm looking at it for, I literally do not know your daughter. Who is your daughter? And I'm like, she keeps telling me to say it to Philip Bonnick. I'm like, I have no idea. Maybe she reads me. And I could yeah. see at that point them looking for, wait, yeah, they actually read you. Mm. And at that point they realize, I've been writing in uh, politics. My children don't care politics. Yeah. They are going straight to this small magazine called Buzz Magazine and yeah. the Pulses and everything yeah. else. So why are you now relevant? And at that point now, the music is growing. We are all growing mm. as one and the industry is, is growing up and everything else. So I understand like parents at that point. Yeah, it was, looking it was at you difficult. For, I get that. And also my, my dad had just passed away in 2003 mm-hmm. and I could feel that fear for my mom. It's like, you know, you're in uncharted waters. Yes. You don't have your partner to help you think through this thing. You're alone. Yeah. You're alone. You know, is this rebellion? Yeah. Is this grief manifesting? You know, just trying to make sure, like, usipote. Yes. Yes, it's the view of unknown. 
Yeah. Yes. And so then, you know, once I understood that piece for myself, it's like, oh, now you don't need to be in fights with her. You don't need to argue with her. Mm-hmm. You'll just show her. Yes. You know? But how did you turn her around? You what just show the, her. Uh-huh. So there were some years where she would say, uh, uh, we're waiting on the Lord to mm-hmm. bless us with a job. And then I'm like, well, maybe I have a job. <laughs> and then uh, it became, oh, she's an entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. Because that's something now she can, yeah, she can relate process, and see, right? Yes. And afanya biashara. Yes. And then some years later it became, you know, you as an artist, and I said, you know I'm an artist. <laughs> you know? So it took a while yeah. to turn her around. And I'm really grateful yeah. for that. That the minute I understood that, like, it's just, this is a parent's love. Yes then it's like oh cool so this is not something and you can't you can't take away the fear it's actually kind of hardwired into the parent yes, because exactly. since the day you were born her job has been to Protect look you. out yes, for your you. best interest yeah. so the only way to turn this conversation around is to show exactly. d- demonstrate the success mm-hmm. of this thing you're talking yes. about have you, have you always been more than a drama queen or did you have other names no in fact yeah that was that's my one and only artistic name with drama queen I've from never the had beginning. It. yeah from the beginning from almost the beginning first yeah. was Muthoni, and mm-hmm. then like I, was, I had a picture where I was playing drums and then yes. I commented drama queen and mm-hmm. then my friends are like yeah that's it then that's it because in the beginning I actually <laughs> thought you were playing around with the word drama no, D-R-A-M-A no, yeah, no. so you don't say I'm a drama queen <laughs> So it's a drama. So I thought it's it's yeah, genius. So, yeah, exactly. So you start out. People like a conversation point. I know, right? <laughs> and so at, at so at this point now, you're getting recognition, and your music is still nascent. It's not yeah. necessarily blowing yeah. up because yeah. at that point, Ogopa DJs and Genga yeah. are Kali for yeah. everything. Yeah. What does it take for somebody like you to decide? Okay, this is literally what's hot. So it's like this podcast. On YouTube, these are the podcasts that are getting one million views. Mm. But here we are, we decide, let's just do this. We chart our own path. It will go. So at what point did you decide? Did at any one point did you think, maybe I need to collab with these guys to get my music growing? Yeah. Or did you also have the 100, yeah, the long, mm, the long game? For aspect? me, going into music, mm. I feel like I had the right taste from the beginning. Uh-huh. So me, I was Team Missy, yeah. uh, Team Necessary Noise, mm-hmm. um, Giddy Giddy Maji Maji, yeah. um, Lauren Hill. Yeah. So I didn't feel the need to come down. Uh, you know, I was like, me, I'm, I'm that, already here. I'm not coming down. <laughs> I'm coming yeah, down. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm coming down. Coming yeah. down. <laughs> I'm coming down. Yeah. Um, the other part, I think, for me was like, I had such a belief that I have something to contribute Mm -hmm. to. I I really felt like, yo, we're making amazing pop music. Yes. I have something to add to this pop music that can widen it or that can deepen it. Mm -hmm. So I didn't feel like I didn't, I didn't feel intimidated Mm -hmm. by uh, not doing the thing that Mm -hmm. was. Yes. Popular. That was popular then. Mm And then I think there's also just like, you know, when you're young and you haven't failed yet, so you don't know <laughs> the exhausting road ahead of you. Yes. You're just like, ah, it's going to work out. Yeah. I'm going to be great. By the time I'm 30, I'll even be retiring. I've won <coughs> yes. like so many Grammys. I'll be so tired of this, you know, music. Living I'll be in so house, wherever. Yes. Indeed. Mm. <laughs> so. I'll be best friends with like, you Beyonce know, and the Mrs. So I think there's something mm. to be said for the recklessness of youth. Yes. Oh, it's the best thing ever. We always think, yeah. by 25? I'll have done this. Then 25 gets there, you're like, I have no idea what I'm yeah. doing. Please don't ask <laughs> when me. When I was approaching because 30, I really had like a crisis for like, what? Are you saying that I'm not going to have won a Grammy? Um, what is my life even? <laughs> yeah, because at that, at that point you're thinking, I remember like some of us, yeah. you'd look at the older guys in the newsroom and I'm like, I don't want to be writing when you're, I'm 38. <laughs> look at me now. So, <laughs> so, so when you look at this, at that point, you actually look at them, you're like, yeah, you're just bitter because you're old hey, and you're not in any. Hey, Mimi, hey, Mimi, I'm never going to be like you. Hey, these days I work with kids who were born when I finished high school. <laughs> and they're there and I tell them my age and they look at me and I'm like, don't talk. And you can see that there's a complete, like, it's shifted. Now yes. how they see you, they're like, oh no. I'm not the old guy. Yeah, that's <laughs> still. 
I'm the first year. Yeah, the stumbling point, block of their growth. <laughs> at one point, I would tell people my age, and I'm like, oh my God, what are babies doing in the newsroom? I'm now telling people, you babies. Indeed. How are you born in 2002? Indeed, indeed. <laughs> so, is, that an, is that a year to be born? <laughs> yeah. At this point, I think, so, so in general, so, so you start out, you, you are charting your own path, of course, it's doing well and everything else. And then I remember when you did Nine Yahoo, everybody was like, Yeah. What is shit yeah. changing? But Kume, it's us who are coming catching to you. Catching up to me, You're man. You're catching up to you because the song, yeah. they, of course, like any other song, has its lovers and haters. Yeah. But it, did it shock you? Um, it didn't shock me, but it felt good. I think that's the first time mm-hmm. I got proper love from mm-hmm. home. Yeah. And because I entered the industry and the feedback that I got from a lot of the industry uh, leaders or who I perceived to be leaders was like, not Kenyan enough, not Kenyan yes. enough. So I really carried a big chip on my shoulder mm-hmm. about like um, my Kenyanness or my place here and... Uh, my worthiness, mm. really. So Nai for me felt like a moment when the streets zilijipa. They're like, yeah. hey, you know, because you know, yes, I'd had. Yeah. So if I think like, you know, I'd had Mikono Kwenyehewa, which you know even got me um, a Mama nomination, yes. right? And I, I remember that year when I was nominated for an MTV, it was myself and yeah. like Diamond. I remember mm-hmm. me and Diamond talking and like Diamond was quite shy at that time, quite, quite was observant. Was it the one that was in Nairobi? No, that was uh, Nigeria. No, that was the first one. The s- no. Because I went to the Nigeria one. When no, Olympics, maybe it was the, the third one. Maybe, so oh, yeah, it, yeah, but it was like 2010, I think, yeah, when yeah, we were yeah. getting a nomination mm-hmm. for Mikono Kwenye yes. I, I wasn't able to celebrate that moment. Mm-hmm. I wasn't able to campaign that. They said that you should go to the audience and they should, you should tell them to vote for you. And I was like, I can't do that. They yeah. already said I'm not Kenyan enough, you know. <laughs> The Kenyans who are Kenyan enough is Piyuni yes. or Daddy Owen, and me, I'm not those things. Yeah, so I didn't, yeah. Home. So I felt it even felt cruel. I felt mm-hmm. like, you know, what MTV setting me up for ah. MTV, were they setting me up for something? Then we got to South Africa, and everybody who was working on the production crew was like, I'm a Tony Drama Queen. Oh, that thing is so dope. Oh, you're so dope. That flow is so amazing. Oh, it's so reminiscent. Like, we should definitely get Missy to listen to that. So I felt for many years, it's like, woof. Mm-hmm. It's like, yes. Me, what I think it is, uh, the people who I think should respond mm. are like, yeah. and then the people who I don't even know that I should aspire to are like. So it took me many years to understand um, music, all art finds its audience. True. It's natural audience. Yes. And sometimes uh, who you want to be your audience mm-hmm. is not going to be the audience. No. Yes. And that doesn't invalidate you okay, as an artist. Yes, it doesn't invalidate the audience that you have. There's yes. not, nothing now wrong about that audience. Mm-hmm. But I spent many years of my career kind of looking over my shoulder, even when we're having lots of success in mm-hmm. Europe, kind of looking over my shoulder for like, you know, but home, I wish I, wish I was big at home. Yes. I wish it worked out at mm-hmm. home. I wish I had the home bag mm-hmm. as well, you know, mm-hmm. and maybe during pandemic is when I was speaking with BN and it's like, no, just have both, like do what is relevant for home and yes. then eat your home bag and then continue being who you are for abroad and like eat your abroad bag. Like it doesn't have to be either or. It took me many years to mm-hmm. like bridge that, to because heal have, that longing for yes. be- belonging. Please love me. So please love like, me. It's not please anymore. Like, yeah. that's my thing. You may like it. Yeah, it's okay. I'm comfortable with my skin. Me, I'm sure. Yeah. So <laughs> at, at I mean, at one point you went to Europe and yeah. uh, was it the Red Bull Academy or something? And you were with these producers and everything else. So no, so I, I didn't do the Red Bull Academy. That's oh, okay. actually Blinky who's done the Red oh, Bull Blinky. Academy. I've always associated. Yeah, yeah, I it yeah. Was no, Blinky. I didn't do the Red Bull Academy. I just found these two Swiss producers uh-huh. through a friend. Uh-huh. So I have a, a friend called Digi Kotega who's yes. Swiss. Yes. So one day we're kicking it. He's mm-hmm. playing me some beats and I'm like, oh, these beats are dope. He's like, yeah, actually my friends make beats. Mm-hmm. Maybe I should introduce you. Then he introduces me to them and them to me. And then we like each other, mm-hmm. like musically. And he's like, cool. Uh, so he, he pays for a flight for me to go to Switzerland to meet wow. his friends. And he's like, worst case scenario is it doesn't work out. You tried. Yeah. Um, Anything after that is a bonus. Yes. So I went to Switzerland in 2013, mm-hmm. spent about 21 days with these guys, yeah. did a bunch of recordings, and Nainia, who was one of those yes. recordings that mm-hmm. we did. So when that um, sort of, and even that song, it's another friend of theirs who was like, oh, you know, I came to Nairobi, I really like Matatu, and I was like, oh. 
And it's like, no, 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 no. I know, I know it sounds cliche, but like there's something about the vibrancy. So just listening to how he yeah. experienced Nairobi, mm -hmm. I was like, oh, I get it, right? When you come from somewhere, maybe you don't see- Yes, this is something The interest fresh. or the specialness yeah. or the freshness of it. So yes. listening to him, I was like, oh, let me write, you know, this ode to Nairobi. Mm -hmm. And then that's the song that like, worked out <laughs> everywhere yes, exactly. like it worked out in uh, switzerland yeah. we performed that song for many years it was mm. actually the last song on the set mm -hmm. it worked out in nairobi and that was kind of the beginning of like yeah there's something there's something wow so you're you're at home but you're writing at home so but you're not at home yeah so what, what's that experience and what's that yeah. whole process about? yeah that those years have been quite intense the, that stretch between 2013, mm -hmm. I would say pandemic is what stopped yes. it all, 2020. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I would say like now proper, proper, um, because between 2013 to 2015, I'd say on the Switzerland side, we were building in 2016 there. We were, yes. we were building, we were building. Then we just started having a takeoff. Yes. And 2018, mm -hmm. 2019, we had a proper like takeoff, you mm -hmm. know, and it's like you're doing the, the touring. I've toured in a way that I can say with confidence, there is no other artist in this region who has toured the way I've toured, nice. right? Mm -hmm. Where it's, you're touring to music audiences, to festival audiences, you're playing some of the world's best festivals and you're playing really good mm -hmm. timings. And you are there because uh, the booking agents saw you at something else and they yeah. think that you have something to offer. So you're not even there because the audience knows you. You're there because the booking agent is like, I think this act is going to work mm -hmm. on my yeah. stage. And then you <clears throat> smash it. And a lot of um, uh, uh, um, like, you know, when we're touring France, for example, they're French speaking. Mm -hmm. So I'm rapping in Schengen in English. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, we have, so you, there's a language barrier yes. happening. So it's really going to come down to the energy, to the show, to mm -hmm. the cadence of the show, yes. what songs come, how the costuming, the dancing, the gimmicks, the lighting. You know, we really, you know, often joke, Greg, Hook and I, those are my collaborators. Mm -hmm. um, we often joke that our show was a Ferrari. We really mm -hmm. built a visually stunning, audio and visual oh, stunning nice. show. Mm -hmm. And we had to do that because that was, our path to growth was live performance. You got one shot, yes. Mm -hmm. So again, now I felt, for many years, I felt like this split personality going on. Because when I look at home, the path for most artists to grow is the song. Yes. Right? My one hot song opens uh, this right collab, it. opens yes. this, 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 mm -hmm. opens this, this. So when you're performing, you're performing to your fans. Yes. The fans of that That's song yes. and of you as an artist. My Europe takeoff was yeah, there were some songs that were good, but it was not the songs that got us the opportunities. Mm -hmm. It was the show. The show, yes. Okay. And the story. Yes. Of this collaboration, mm -hmm. of this like, I don't know, African feminist dope babe, the yes. look, the feel. So I didn't feel that I had somebody to have this conversation with. Yes. Because when I look at them, you know, so my bro is a Saudis or, you know, King Yash, et cetera, everybody is, it's their audience. Mm -hmm. They are building yes. their audience against a song. And us guys are building an audience against everything. It's almost like the, you watch the show and then you become a fan. I see what you mean. Because, yeah. yeah. yeah I, I get what you're saying because majority like you mentioned the artist will come with one hit song everybody will like it and the hit is what opens the door exactly and then now the second song has to be a hit that almost yeah. sounds like the first one yeah. then the artists are like yeah. it's hard just, to build. you're just giving me the first song <laughs> so i'm out because once yeah. the artist now the, the fans don't feel the second song it's they're hard. out to the next person. Yeah. So, so uh, our trajectory is quite different. Yeah. Which isn't to say that we didn't have a song that worked out. I know that in 2018, our album She yes. did extremely well because we had a song that was right at the opening credits mm -hmm. of um, Wanori's film Rafiki. Yeah. And Rafiki, I mean, traveled the world, but yes. it did exceptionally well in France. Yes. So we had lots of people at the show who were like, oh, we had your song in Rafiki, yes. we found you on Spotify, and then we found mm. out that you have a show. Yes. So when you do the indoor touring, so that's the fall window, mm -hmm. um, in fall we would perform to our fans. A lot of the people who would come to the indoor shows yes. were people who knew our song. Mm -hmm. um, but when you play the <clears> festival <throat> uh, yes. circuit, that one, it's like, 
it's the show and it's like the <laughs> the booker is a fan yeah but it's, but the, it's the same thing where if i've come for you for one song then i see the show thank you i'm like yeah, yeah. yeah. i came for one song yeah yeah i stayed for yeah. for yeah. the show yeah so it's practically the same and yeah you're still but i didn't know that yeah of course so i knew that mm-hmm. In pandemic, when I was now reflecting upon what is life, where do I go forward? Aha. Uh-huh. In the moments, in those years, when especially 2018, 2019, when we're having takeoff, mm-hmm. I it, it was so stressful. Mm-hmm. It was so hard because then I'm doing this. I'm also still uh, effectively running uh, blankets. Mm-hmm. And uh, towards the end of 2019, we had designed the music incubator. Yes. So it, it felt like my life was constantly being pulled in different, two yes. different um, directions. Yeah, and the, I guess there would also be kind of like, I would almost want to say an imposterness of it. Because I knew, I mean, it was smashing. It was amazing. These shows were amazing. But I thought that the path was this one that I'd seen at home, where you yeah. have a song, then you build your fans, and then yes. your fans build you. Mm-hmm. Uh, sh- uh, that, they give you that thing, you. Yeah, I love right? you and I follow, yes. And now me, I felt like, oh, I don't have fans. My fans are the booking agents, <laughs> right? Yeah. So feeling almost illegitimate. Mm-hmm. Do you have imposter syndrome? I had a lot of Europe. that. I had a mm-hmm. lot of that in retrospect. So mm-hmm. now kind of like trying to unpack the angst because those uh-huh. years had a lot of angst. There was a lot of, I don't know how to explain that feeling. Mm-hmm. It's like, illegitimacy that's yes. really the word yes. it felt almost like me my success is not the real or the mm. right kind of success uh-huh. because the right kind of success is this other model that i've home. seen yes. where it's like yeah you know you campaign a song then mm. another song then yeah. you build your fans mm. and now la, la, la. so mine isn't that so if you ask this twenty five thousand people who are currently dying for mdq <laughs> if you ask them a hey, song x they yeah. don't know yep. a song yeah but the show is amazing. but the song is amazing so i i thought it was illegitimate I, yeah. you know so it's crazy i'm telling you there was a lot of so this kind of business because they i think what europe did to you will show you the business side of it it showed me that there's another way exactly there's another way. it's not always one way yeah it showed and me that there's can, another way yes. it showed me that um uh, there, there are multiple ways to skin a cat yes um it also reinforced for me that your audience isn't necessarily the audience that you want your audience is the one that loves you yeah so wherever those people are, go there because that love is what is going to put food on your plate. Yes. And that is also what is going to give you energy <clears throat> to do whatever needs to happen next. So when you look at somebody like Banner Boy, mm. I'm sure you've started him and everything else. And everybody right now, like people don't know Banner Boy was used to come to Nairobi and perform shows and nobody really cares until is it like three years ago when did he like he, he, he hit when the Nigerians I would like to, I would like to Banner Boy please be watching this I'd like to refute what Philip is saying we have loved you from the jump no we have us I'm talking about Come global burn. global yeah. global audiences yeah. we loved Banner Boy when he was doing from things with like you know, Harmonize and from all the, the beginning yes. pre that I mean, last mm-hmm. night I was talking about Banner mm-hmm. Boy with a friend of mine mm-hmm. that to me it's as an artist this again watching mm-hmm. Banner Boy yes. for me has been terrifying uh-huh. so let me yeah speak on that yeah. <laughs> so before i am an artist i'm a fan yes that's what made me want to be an artist admiring other artist. artists yes. right so i remember the first time i had banner boy and just mm-hmm. being like this is so fresh this feels mm-hmm. like nigeria by way of london yes. it feels like it could like it feels experimental in its sound mm-hmm. it's so good right i remember feeling that and then kind of watching banner boy growing 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 and then um a whole other wave of nigerian yes. artists kind of came and so there was a while there where it almost felt like as a fan i felt like the shine wasn't as much on banner boy yes and banner boy just was relentless yes. in banner boy yes. right so now when you see this person selling out stadiums across the world in mm-hmm. places that I didn't know, to be honest, I didn't know that that's a thing that you can imagine as an African artist, that Banner Boy is literally the biggest artist 
on the continent now. Yeah. I mean, it's him and Bad Bunny. And I think, I, yeah, I, exactly. I want to say, like Bad last Bunny. year with the last last and all the it's others. It's him and Bad Bunny. Please like don't come for me. Artist but globally. that's kind of what I'm saying. Yes. And also, like the things that he's able to unlock. Mm. You know, like the the artistic when you look at the show like the kind of machinery that has now you know come into play for banner boy so that he can have this really incredible artistic yeah. experiences i honestly did not know that that was a thing that was possible and available for us as yes. african yeah. artists because i actually uh, whatever you've said is true because i watched his uh his show the madison square garden Correct. i think last year yes sir. and i'm a i'm a I can say I'm a casual Banner Boy fan, okay. not like you. It's a whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> but when I watch the show, at that point, Nicole, which song is that? So I'm, still, I'm looking at it yeah. because the show is crazy. And he understood that because he has a whole audience for, for almost exclusively of white people who have no idea what to even think about and everything else, but they are here. So and for the him, it was. real. Exactly. So the entire, I think it was a two hour show, it was crazy. Like you look at it and you're like, Wow, he has white people dancing. And right now, after you've talked about the show in Europe, now I understand when you look at it, even the WizKids and everybody else when they sell out O2 arenas, but Banner Boy mostly, he's, I know you're here because of one song. Let me introduce you to my catalog. Yeah, but that I think also Banner Boy crossed that a threshold point. a few years ago. Now mm-hmm. people know, I mean, like, you know, Last Last was really the song of Last Summer. You know exactly. what I mean? Yeah. Um, but also just like, there's a scale. So like now even just remove Africa, remove yes. the word. Mm-hmm. There's very few artists who get to experience artistry at the level that Banner Boy is experiencing True. now, where you can work True. with the best sound engineers, the best visual artists. You have a, a, a team that's thinking about merchandising. You can think about global touring. Mm-hmm. Yes. There's very few artists. I'm saying America, pick mm-hmm. your top 10 artists in America. Very few of them are having the experience yes. that Banner Boy is having. True. And we grew up in a world where America dictated yes, what the, is, what what's is, hot and, and what are trends, cool. yes. right? Those were the, yeah. the idols. A lot of my mm. idols were Americans. All of us, yeah. So now to see like, oh, Banner Boy has surpassed my <laughs> idols. I know. They are now his fans. They even... It's insane to me. I don't know and which I artist think... the other day did a song, did a video and then posted Ban- on a Banner Boy song. Uh, Cristiano Ronaldo, I think. Was it a Banner Boy song? <laughs> He did something the other day. Yeah. He was working out. Yeah. No, uh, sorry. He did an, a, a piano thing. Yeah. And people are losing their minds for. Cristiano with like 300 million followers on Instagram. He's choosing an I'm a piano song. So that's now what you're saying. Where even he does not know what the artists are saying. But yeah, it's just it. this thing that has happened. Yes. It's it, the, the, the thing I love about what's happening about global growth mm-hmm. and explosion of... Uh, both uh, um, I'm a piano and 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 Afrobeats yes. and you know just the Africanness of it all mm-hmm. is even the people who constructed the playbook. This thing has yeah. superseded yes. the playbook. They don't know what to do. You understand? Yeah. So there's something so mind blowing for mm-hmm. me yeah. as an artist, and I keep I kind of feel that like really the 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 age of spirit right now is it's too small what you think it can be, yeah. because now at the point at which you're marveling at mm-hmm. what Banner Boy has done, that's already his past. Yes, he's onto the next. Which means his which means his next. Yeah. <laughs> so this thing that is blowing your mind is already the past. That was six months ago, bro. You guys, I recorded this last you year. You talk about Madison Square Garden, and me, I'm telling you this weekend, he sold out a stadium in the States. He's the first African artist to sell yeah. out a football stadium. Mm-hmm. So that's like 45K for yeah. people. Yeah, even more. It's insane. So, so <laughs> w- w- when you look at the business of it, because yeah. you talked about merchandising and everything yeah. else, it's something I don't see locally. Yeah. And maybe you can, you can talk about the business of music in Kenya, where, yes, artists are big, their songs are big, but it's only their songs that are big. Yeah. You don't see merchandising. I usually say the first time uh, I heard the name um, Coco Master, what's his name? Debunch. Yes. Was the first time I went f- to to Nigeria for the Mamas, the first one. And Peace Square at that point were big in Nairobi. So I go, I'm on a cab and I'm asking the cab guy, how's Peace Square? He literally looked at me. I don't know. And he literally dismissed me. And I'm like, shush, haters. Keeping it moving. So I asked like four other people. And everybody was like, I don't know. I'm like, what do you mean you don't know who yeah. Peace Square is? Like, they know who Peace Square is, but they don't know the, the, his, not, next, uh, his new song. Yeah. But they told me, 
No, him, he went international. So that's also yeah. another thing I realized about Nigerians. Once you cross that threshold, they, they let the world have you, then they bring the next guy. Mm. So that's why I think they always mm. bring out someone. Mm. So I remember they told me there's a guy called Debunge. And I'm like, who? Yeah. And at that point, somebody was like, he even has mobile phones and give me one of those like Tumulika Moses. Yeah. That's been written Kokomasta. And I'm like, I think this is like 2008 or 2009. Yeah. And I'm like, who is this? Yeah. Until at the show when he won, I think, Artist of the Year or Best Song. And the audience went banana. And I'm like, so that's the bunch. Like at that point, all of us are like, so that's the bunch. <laughs> like at that point, everybody, when we came back home, I remember I wrote a story talking about this new artist who's about to be a hit. Mm. And even I think a week after that, I think his first song kind of came up. Mm. And it's the business. They come understanding merchandising, IP, yeah. uh, you know, licensing and everything yeah. else. Is that something yeah. you, you think it's yeah. big here? Or how are you? So first, I want to say to that point before, I, I want to correct us a perception. Mm -hmm. The Nigerian music industry, it's not that they know business more than us. Mm -hmm. Please, I beg. Yeah. <laughs> I beg. <laughs> Please, as a Kenyan artist, as an East African artist, do not be deceived. No, 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 no. But it has definitely gone refining. It yes, has become, yeah. it has definitely, mm -hmm. it's not the same industry it was, um, yes. you know, when Coco Master was yes. doing his thing. And think about how insane it was to us that Coco Master was like signed by Kanye West. Yes, Remember, we were exactly. all like, oh my God. <laughs> Um, and he was only like a stepping stone, like see how, you know, mm -hmm. see how much more has happened. Yes. But I will say that um, uh, a lot of that music business mm -hmm. requires infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right? Yeah. And I don't mean buildings, but I mean a system, a, a machine system, yes. that's kind of working around that. Yeah. Uh, merchandising is a piece of the yes. equation, right? right. Yes. And when you're starting, it's easy to do it because it's kind of like you're making pins or tote bags, whatever you find relevant mm. for your audience. It's an important thing. There's a point at which it becomes a business because now you need to produce, I don't know, let's say a thousand pieces of yes. something. So somebody's got to put down the money mm -hmm. to do that, yes. <laughs> right? Yes. So in other parts in the world, for example, in Europe, you would work with a merchandiser. Somebody yes. whose business is you, you provide the artwork, you see these are the items, yeah. their job is to mm -hmm. produce, yes. to warehouse, yes. to ship to people, then you, you get yes. a cut. Yes. So until you have that person who is doing it at that scale here, it means that the artist has to be also the merchandiser. Ah, yes. Okay, I got you. Yeah. So I feel like we give ourselves too much shit. Yes. And that's a thing that we must rest, Kenyans. <laughs> we must rest. Like, we're already living in yes. Zakaya's economy. Yes. Please, <laughs> just relax. <laughs> These are not things that can all be done at the same time. Yes. That's another business line called takes, merchandising. Yes. Yes. And that's another... But also understanding that, then there's uh, another business called touring yes right yeah. which is is and is not doing a concert touring no. the dynamics of touring are entirely different yes. from the dynamics of doing a good concert here then two months later doing yeah, a good concert in another dance, place yeah, right yes, yes. so it's somebody else's business to yes. build this thing called touring yes right yeah. um so me i have nothing but love for kenyan artists mm -hmm. and east african artists who are doing it and 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 because we're really the everything which is an insane thing when you think about, like, you literally cannot do everything. And yet we are expected to do everything. Yeah, and then we don't yeah. have the same resourcing that yes. some of these, you know, our, our peers in, you know, different places um, have had. Mm -hmm. uh, in places, you know, like we've had lots of stories and, you know, as a journalist, you know this, like there was always questions about where did some of this fundamental money it's that got there... Majority. Nigerian music industry to where it, yeah. it was. Yeah. Now you can say that there's venture capital money, yes. that there's like, you know. But back then it was the wash wash money exactly. also pushing it. Even yeah, in the but US now our guys, uh, our wash wash guys don't have vision <laughs> here. Our wash wash guys just want to buy Lamborghinis. Yeah, and just take photos. You know Invest what I mean? Something, yes. uh, like, so that that other piece, like there are many pieces that have to come together. And then together the rich guys for, only want to build malls. They only want to build malls, <laughs> right? And I've spotted so many malls where I'm like, please just erase all these walls in here and make this a music venue. Yeah. Yes. Uh, make this an entertainment venue, yeah, right? You can still good. earn the yeah. landlord money, yes. right? So this this question about the connection of capital, people who yes. have capital, people who have skills, mm -hmm. um, please 
let's give ourselves a break. True. Vitu zingine as we are proceeding. As yeah. long as the knees, the fundamentals are there, yeah. zitakuja zenyewe yeah. they'll fall into place. They'll come. So plus it's also what it's only been what said 20 years. Yeah. So we're still I'm, tr- it's, I'm trying to think about like our first like can we call it like our big first resurgence, yes. you know, Akina Hardstone. Mm-hmm. Uh, was in the uh, nameless of Mega Rider. Yeah, nameless of 99. You know what I mean? That yeah. Kaali period. Yes. It's it's so it's and it's there was nothing to support those things. You know, like it was producers. Yes. You know, and artists and fans. Yes. So other things need to come into play now mm-hmm. to like move that amazing thing to the next level, and it can't be thrown all of it to, to the, artist. the artist or to the producer. The yeah. producer knows how to make music. The producer doesn't know how to build a brand. Because actually, like, like right now, there was a point when Play KE, uh, it's still ongoing. Obviously, it can never stop. But I remember when a DJ would play, when a DJ would play, what, five songs of Kenyan music, who would have to go back to Akina, Akina yeah. Kalamashaka. Yeah. These days, this year alone, a DJ so can do a one-hour, two-hour set so much of just new music. music. The There's Genga so tones and everybody else. Much and everybody music. Doing, I think, so. The other thing that I think that we undertell about, yeah. particularly Kenya, that's something we're so fortunate. We don't have this monolithic sound, yes. right? Yeah. So if you look at a market like uh, South Africa, yes. uh, either you are doing ama piano, <laughs> or because like it's ama piano, yes. or you're doing house. Yes. Or you're doing hip hop. Yes. Or you're doing R&B. Yes. Right? The, the R&B and the hip hop is very America facing. Mm-hmm. The house and the ama piano is kind of, you know, South Africa yes. facing. In Kenya, you, there's so many sounds. There's, so, yes. there's such a True. spectrum of sound. Yeah. And I'm like, that's our superpower. That it's not one thing, that it can be many mm-hmm. things. Yes. So I also think we should give ourselves credit for that and, and, and give ourselves less shit. <laughs> so you, if you find an R&B artist that you like from Kenya, mm-hmm. Kufa Naye. Yes, that is true. Just keep going with that, Kufa Naye. Don't require them mm-hmm. to be like this other nothing. You just go in that direction. I think that's part of our superpower. True. And maybe as, as we wind up, uh, when you're selecting artists or you and your team are selecting artists for the next BMW, is it, of, I, of course, it's not random. Never. So it's what's, never been random. What's the process yeah. towards it? So our, as a platform, mm-hmm. our, our thought is discover, love, share. Mm-hmm. You have to discover something. Yes. Uh, you have to fall in love with something yes. before you're willing to share it. Share so whether it's food yes. or fashion or a food vendor, I mean, a, a musician, a yeah. fashion vendor, a meal, mm-hmm. something. When it comes to music programming specifically, it's really important for us that we present the spectrum of this thing that is called Kenyan music, yes. right? Mm-hmm. Because Gengeton is sitting pretty next to R&B, is sitting pretty next to um, uh, ethnic music, is sitting next to hip hop, is sitting... So you can't say that there's this one thing that is mm-hmm. Kenyan music. Yes. So as a platform, our job, we think, is to represent the spectrum. This is, when we say Kenyan music, these are the varieties and variations mm-hmm. of what could be Kenyan music. So do you usually have data that you use? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have data that, that you like, know... I know you're part of a Spotify team. So we, I but mean, I'm... I'm yeah, so I mean, the first thing, obviously, is just to listen yes, to true. a wide amount of yes, music. Yes, a lot. <laughs> Right, yeah. that really helps. What the booking team is people who like we listen to a lot of music, yes. mm-hmm. we attend a lot of shows yeah. because there's lots of artists who maybe have that one or two songs mm-hmm. on Spotify. But mm-hmm. when you go for a show, I don't know, at K1, mm-hmm. you're like, Oh, bro, you can actually play 45 yes. minutes, right? Mm-hmm. So you have to be willing to discover music. Um, but for us as a platform, the first thing is spectrum. Yes, we, we want to create, we want it's a buffet of Kenyan music. The second thing we think is it's really important to reflect some discovery music. So we say this one, you don't know and you don't know what you don't know. Mm-hmm. So it's our job to put you on. Yes. Then there's another category, which is the rising star. So these are people who are already putting in the work and mm-hmm. they're already creating a buzz for themselves. And we say that these people need to be platformed mm-hmm. on a professional a, a platform, blankets, but also the, now they can have the benefits of playing to an audience who may have not caught yes. their musicianship, but mm-hmm. have caught 
a yes. hot song, mm-hmm. right? Because yeah. a hot song is a hot song. Yes. It'll find you. Mm-hmm. Um, so now you watch this rising star and you're like, oh, it's not just this one hot song or look at how much mm-hmm. range this artist has. Yes. Then of course you have your headliner. So people who have already put in the work yes. and you know have audiences and have traction and are quite global facing. This for us is an important thing. So the blankets programming is always going to reflect this. This year we've been very, um, we've added another part of the programming, which is called the legend set. Yes. And for us, it's kind of reflecting on, uh, we've, uh, we have a memory problem in yeah. Kenya and we always act like we're the first ones to do something. And we're like, yeah, at the point at which me, I said touring, the mushrooms had toured in the seventies extensively. Yeah. The mushrooms were the salty soul of their time, yes. but I never watched the mushrooms. True. So then you should put on the mushrooms because that's our music heritage. And that's the place where you know, the mushrooms walk so that South Soul can run. So then True. you need to have, yes. you know, that. We owe it to ourselves to do that discovery piece. Mm-hmm. So now we've added the legend set and we are seeing that there's incredible love for that legend set. And there's, um, there's a new audience, you know. The millennial audience didn't watch the legends, but the Gen Zs. So we find that we have a responsibility to do the storytelling mm-hmm. of Kenyan music, yeah. of East African music, of African music, and that's how. Nice. Yeah. So uh, what are some of the things you still struggle with as an artist and as a business Oh my God. Uh, it's becoming better, but I guess balance. Mm-hmm. Um, so for example, like yeah, like yeah, yeah, work, work, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. because you're sitting in, 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 in different subcommittees yes. of the festivals and you're also sitting in the music incubator program and you're also an artist. So just kind of finding the balance, making that cohesive, yeah. but it's definitely, um, getting better. Um, then I would say now the thing for me is um I've, I've i've taken a, a sharp right back into music you know so yes. pandemic mm. i had a baby uh so now it's like okay now i'm in music mode yes. and uh, it's such an a consuming mode <laughs> artistry yeah. you know like it, yeah. it's it's interesting it's challenging it's exciting so that's a thing for me like uh and even getting the team to adjust to like, say Modonia could rehearse on, say Modonia could studio, say yeah. Modonia could touring. Yeah, yeah. yeah. like, eh, mm. so that. But I'm really happy. I think by the end of next year, I'll have erased myself off some of these things, you oh, know. Nice. Yeah, like, okay. you know, we are really working hard to build the organization and, you know, to 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 let me play the right role mm-hmm. in the organization. Yes. I'm I'm definitely much less involved in day-to-day ops now. Mm-hmm. So it's 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 getting better. I guess the the big struggle now is like uh, is on my insecurities though, Sunny. <laughs> a successful show later when you sit and you're like, that was a successful show. What is success to you right now? Like mm-hmm. your last song, uh, your last uh, blankets, and also as a musician. But to start with, as a show, when Sunday is over, guys have gone home, yeah. guys are sharing photos, yeah. hashtag blankets and whatever. What to you do you sit and say, that's a successful show? Um, the cohesion of the team. Mm-hmm. Um, our ability to f- rise to things that come up. So that's really important. Uh, the second one for me is that the systems hold. We spend a lot of time designing mm-hmm. uh, systems, security systems or experience systems yeah. or whatever. So when the systems actually hold yeah. and um, we stress test them and they, they yield, yes. that I think for me that's success. Mm-hmm. Um, when uh, the people who came to the gig to make money, so whether it's vendors, suppliers, um, um, uh, the bar, yes. for example, the mm-hmm. sponsors, yes. when they are able to hit their KPIs, mm-hmm. that feels really good. Oh, nice. Um, and then for me, it's also when the artists have like, oh, that mm-hmm. was such an amazing, we felt so good. When the systems built around the artists really mm-hmm. allow the artists yes. to like fly mm-hmm. on stage. And so their set time is over and they're just, they're adding one more song. They're like, ah, okay. 
you go. Enjoy. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that feels good. Yeah. As an artist, I'm now finding um, my first measure of success is being present. Mm-hmm. There were many years when I wasn't present. I was just kind of like machine. You're doing the thing that you practiced. Um, so being present and taking the moment to receive the love. Um, that for me is a big measure yeah. of success. Yeah. Um, another one is um, the rehearsal becomes translated mm-hmm. to the performance. The performance yes. So we've been doing, we've been on tour, me, Blinky uh, and Musa. We have, mm-hmm. you know, we've done some shows. So seeing that growth, you know, because it was almost three years and something mm-hmm. that I wasn't on stage, yes. the two years of the pandemic, mm-hmm. the... The year after pandemic, that yes. was 2022, because I was on maternity mm-hmm. leave. So I only got back into rehearsal this year. So yes. it was almost, yeah, it was going. So just, there was a lot of anxiety there. Like, do I really got it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> do I still got it? So to be honest, it's like, oh, you'll always have it. Yeah. So I think that for me is a, is a big is a big metric of success. So mm-hmm. the things that you practice, were you able to bring uh, to the show? Yes. And, you know, were you able? Without freedom. And so for, when it comes to things like money, what's your relationship with money? Healthy. <laughs> <laughs> but I, uh, so I did Syntonomy. Uh-huh. That really helped me to acquire some, some calmness uh-huh. around it. Yeah. Um, I think um, losing a lot of money on the business and working through it and just being an adult about things. Yeah. It's really shifted my relationship with money. Mm. It's like, oh, okay, okay. Money can get, can do things. You can get it. You can lose it. Yeah. You can earn it. Um, so I think that, you, you know, that that's shifted. Mm. I think there's now a greater belief with, within me that like, at the beginning of the artist years, you know, money is so precarious. You don't, you get it, but you don't know, are you going to get more? You know, yeah, like true. then, you know, then you're, you're on this treadmill. I need to do these things that I can get this money. And, you know, so there's a lot of anxiety around that. So now I feel like a lot of that has, um, has dissipated. You, you know? have money issues you think you need to change up to now. Like when you see an issue, you have to buy it. <laughs> Whether it's in dollars or pounds. <laughs> so you're like, I need to now stop kind of that. <laughs> what do you spend your most money on? No, no, away from no. the baby and the family. Yeah, I was going to say family things. Like, uh, That's what I'm saying, away yeah, from away from that. Yeah. Um, I mean, this ain't cheap, yeah. but it's part of the, it's part of the brand. Yeah, so I don't know. Money. I think I feel like I have a pragmatic relationship oh, nice. with money overall. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You know, my mom was a primary school teacher in government institutions for years. So I come from that age where you are told money does not grow on trees and yes. like indeed <laughs> you know, I know yeah, like, yeah, I and, the, and when you do get into money there's such practical considerations you know for money i saw what it meant like when my dad passed away mm. and we owned our home vis-a-vis friends who when their dad passed away like, you know life dramatically changes yeah. because maybe they were the breadwinner yes. and then now like you had all the struggles so what it signaled you know for me for example is like there's some practical fundamentals of life yeah. so it's like it's dope to splurge on a moti but it's better to have a place you know even if it's like a one room yes. that is in your name that yeah. allows you to have an asset that you know first gives you access to more credit. Yeah. But also if things go sideways in life and any day yes. anything can happen. Chochote chaweza kutokea. You have somewhere that you can, you know, shelter yeah. yourself. Mm-hmm. Um now having a baby and you're like, oh, you know, my parents kind of had the comfort of having a job that has like steady yes. income. Also now you, like a you pension. Uh, hey. so now you you are the pension, you are the you know, so then it just like I find I make a lot of really pragmatic mm-hmm. um things. Um and actually if I would say what I I wish actually would I would happen is more lightness. Mm-hmm. I wish I, I, I'm, I'm not I wish but that's the thing that I'm working on to have more lightness you know around money and not to have guilt mm-hmm. you know when you're like I eat, we did you know we, we blew a stack on some clothes yes and not to have to justify that to yourself like you look you're an artist you need to have and just be like just be calm 
it is okay you can have nice clothes yes you are loud you know or oh, you want to change the music system in your car do it yes. you know like don't you don't have to write an essay to just yourself to justify yes. like this is why just i have balance that you know it. it's yeah. okay yes you can you can do that that's yeah. not something mm-hmm. yeah the lightness that's the thing yes. that i'm looking and what uh, as we last question what's your best and worst of blankets like which one can you use? Do, do you have one year like oh my god when i remember this show <laughs> i want to cry up to I now have many worsts <laughs> <laughs> i don't have any best i uh-huh. have so many so the, the best is yet to come so it is. actually that's it it's true the best is yet to come mm-hmm. the best is yet to come and by 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 the same you know breath like we've been through some tough things and you know there are more tough things that are yet to come things yes. that you can't even imagine mm-hmm. you know um I, I don't have it. That one, that one, that one. <laughs> I can see it. <laughs> no, but you can be backstage and you just know, guy, let to me mwaga pesa. I'm going to have a hard conversation with my advisory board. <laughs> so, you know, we've had those. Mm-hmm. Uh, as an artist, I would say that um, there's a show we played in 2019 mm-hmm. in in Brittany that's at the top of France. Mm-hmm. And we were playing the main stage, and it was myself, Black Eyed Peas, and David Guetta, and um, it, it was such a full circle moment because when I took Mikono Kwenye Hair to the radio, mm-hmm. I remember being told that yo, this thing is so great, but Kenyans will never accept a thing like this. This sounds like something that Black Eyed Peas did. Uh-huh. I remember those were the words that were used by the mm-hmm. programmer then, yeah. and I was like, what? So you're saying now it's too good for us? What are you saying? Yeah, because. Black Eyed Peas should be Precisely. at least. And I was like, just test it. You know, it should be at, yeah. And and I love Will I Am. I think that's like such a brilliant individual. Mm. So to do this gig where it was, it was me and then them. And when we got off the stage, we had like 50K people at this, at yeah. this festival. Mm. When we got off the stage, the festival team and the Black Eyed Peas team had made a... Uh, like a path mm-hmm. and we we just got an ovation as we you know we were passing wow. right mm-hmm. and akina we were like oh my god you're so dope who are you and i was having a mind very Out calm body experience very calm but truly i was tripping tripping balls but i was like oh my god how crazy is this moment yeah. in life like i was once accused of being too good or being mm-hmm. you and, yeah, yeah. and now here is you being like yo bro you're so dope and i'm like yeah this is so the person you accused of being yeah, this too the, good the person of, yes, now the giving person, you yeah, being like yeah you're dope so for me that that remains a moment in time the next moment is when i'm going to end up in an you know um elevator i do with jay-z and uh, i'm gonna have i'm gonna give him his flowers i look forward to that moment happening it's, going to it's coming soon it's coming it's coming Speaking soon to existence. it's coming soon <laughs> Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. It's a wrap. It's Modoni Donga, Miss Modoni Drama Queen. Hi. The amazing, amazing. Thank you for coming on the show. Absolutely. It's amazing. I hope you had a good time. I loved it. <laughs> I, I didn't want it to end because for me it was the business side of it and everything else. And I've admired you for the long, for the longest time. Uh, I remember I think the last time we had a conversation was that. Yeah, yeah exactly. We had a nice me. long conversation. And you wanted an interview. Then I think you went to Europe after yes, that. Yes, exactly. So that's how that idea died. <laughs> Now here we are. Here we are. So thank you very much. Thank you.